This video is going to actually use SWIM to uh, calculate and plot a water surface profile in a rectangular uh, channel. Um, and this essentially replicates uh, what we would do in an open channel flow class or what we'll do later when we're doing water surface profiles by hand. Only we'll use SWIM as the calculation tool. Uh, so what we're going to have is the picture that's depicted here. So there's a channel. It's a rectangular channel. And it's one meter wide. And the discharge coming down the channel is 2.5 cubic meters per second. So that's the hydraulic data. One meter wide. Two and a half cubic meters per second. The bottom slope is one part in a thousand. 0 0.001. And Manning's end for this situation is 0 0.025. And we're told that the depth of the profile is two meters right at the um, right at the weir. So it's two meters deep right at this point, and we want to compute the water surface profile for a distance 200 meters upstream. And we're going to use SWIM as the computation tool. Now we'll have to make a couple of decisions up front, and the main one is we're going to pick a spatial spacing of 200 meters. So we'll compute the, the, the water surface elevation every 200 meters. So there should be 10 of those. Um, there we go. So the delta x would represent little spatial steps here. here and so on. So each of those spots is 200 meters apart. Okay, well to construct a uh, swim model of that, let's go ahead and we'll sort of shrink this, but leave it big enough to see. We'll go ahead and orientate our swim modeling environment. And we'll pretty much just destroy what we have here. Create a new project, don't save changes. And now we have uh, a blank drawing canvas. I'll even make it a little bigger. That might come in handy. Okay, so we're going to have an outfall. And I'm going to work from downstream to upstream. So there's our outfall. And then if I have a calculation every 200 meters, I'm going to need a node every 200 meters. I'm going to need 10 of them. So there's the first 200, the second 200, the third 200, fourth 200, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten. And remind yourself that the drawing canvas is just a drawing canvas, so this doesn't have to convey any um, super faithful representation of reality. Since I'm lazy, I want to turn the nodes into rectangular conduits, one meter wide, and I'm going to allow them to get as deep as three feet. And both sidewalls exist. So now it will do the open channels, and they're 200 feet long, and Manning's in is 0 0.025. I think that takes care of everything. And now we'll start drawing the links. Okay, my personal preference is downstream to upstream, but you can do it any way you want. As long as we get to the same end. Okay, so there is our geometric configuration. And I think I'm going to save this. Okay, at least the file saved now. Now we're going to need to provide inflow. We'll go ahead in the most upstream junction, and if there's going to be two and a half cubic meters per second everywhere, there's certainly going to be two and a half cubic meters there. And we'll put the baseline flow of 2.5. Choose OK. And we need to make a quick change on the flow units per second. OK, 
Okay, the flow units are now liters per second. Um, and so if there's 2.5 cubic meters per second, that's 2,500 liters per second. And it looks like it didn't uh, properly do the rectangles, so we'll just use the group edit feature, just like we had in um, EPA Net. So this is a conduit. We want to make the maximum depth equal to 3. Choose OK, and we're done. All right, our program is almost ready to run. Next, we want to go into the dates, six hours should be plenty of time. But we now just need to decide whether it's going to be steady flow, kinematic wave, or dynamic wave. Let's, let's pretend steady flow is going to work. I happen to know it may not. And the outfall is no longer a free outfall, but instead it's a fixed, and the fixed stage is going to be two meters. Okay, we can now try to run the program and see what happens. It says the run was unsuccessful, and it's complaining about minimum elevation drops, and that is a note to us that we didn't set our elevations yet. So if the bottom of this outfall is at elevation zero, and this outfall is 200 meters away, and it has gone one part in a thousand, that means its elevation has to be 0 0.2 because every thousand meters is going to be a one meter gain. 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, 1.2, 1.6, 1.8, and finally 2 meters. Okay, that should handle that error. Run it again. And the next issue is outfall 1 has more than one link or an outlet link. And what that means is the flow directions are wrong. So if we reverse all these, now here's an important point. We ran it as a steady flow. The flow depth here is supposed to be two meters. If we just look at this pipe and have it give us the depth, it says the flow depth is 3 meters, and that doesn't make sense. So let's go ahead and run a profile. We'll start there. We'll end there. Find path. OK. And there's our water surface profile. And that's a little uh, odd looking. Um, down here at zero, and it shows that the, saying the water depth is at three meters, which is not correct. And so we have to ask ourselves, what have we done wrong? The main thing we've done wrong is the steady flow part. Uh, doesn't do a interesting appears it never got the uh, max depth information from the group edit. I'll try that again. So in data inputs at a premium you have to pay a lot of attention and don't expect to get it right uh, the first time you do it but with repeated 
going back. Max depth is three. Okay, this one looks like it'll produce a better result. And it's still incorrectly calculating uh, flow depth. So, the first thing to do is to go ahead and give up and go get a job at McDonald's. Alternatively, we go back here to options and we choose the correct type of routing and rerun the program, I suspect we'll probably get a better result. And here we are with it <coughs> completed. Now, you notice I used a dynamic simulation, so with the uh, the initial instance is bogus, but you notice here at six hours nothing's changing, so we've reached an equilibrium solution. So this is a trick to use SWIM to produce steady flow profiles in open channels using the dynamic routing portion and running it long enough so that you reach an equilibrium result.